All right, so our next step right now is to create a new level and actually transition to that level because right now what we have is a way to kind of complete the level. Like let's say this over here is our level complete. This is where we would be to create to essentially finish the level, right? So we get both our characters to get there. But like now what, right? Uh, we need a way to get to the next level and we actually need something that essentially transitions us into the next level. So let's do that. Let's create a new scene here and we're going to create a new node called canvas layer. And this is going to be a global scene. So let's rename this to stage manager. That's just what I like to call my scenes. And I can actually either put this in a globals folder out here uh, or I can put it in my scenes and then create a global. That's usually what I do. Uh, globals, global, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so we'll pop this in and save. And now we need to actually globalize this. To do that, we'll go to project settings, go to global. And here in the path, we'll just find what we just did and use the scene instead of a uh, script. So you might, if you've seen other tutorials, you might see people using scripts instead of a scene. Uh, but it works very similarly. But the advantage to doing this is if I actually hit play, if we go to the remote section, we will see our scene get added here and it is a canvas layer. And what a canvas layer is, is essentially a painting or an area that I paint on top of my screen. So the cool part about this is if I add a color rectangle, this is literally just a painting, literally just a color. And I'm going to turn on the grid over here and just make this the same size as our screen. I'm going to turn this to black. And let's hit play. And now we see a black screen. And that is because of this color rectangle. Now, if you have multiple stage uh, manager or sorry, canvas layers, uh, the layering will matter. Uh, for default, the layer is zero. So our game is kind of like on layer zero. Uh, but the layer here for this canvas layer is layer one. So this will be on top. Uh, if you want to like make sure that it's on top of everything, uh, you can do like a much higher number, like 10 or 20. Uh, I'm going to do two just because we might add something later or we never know. Uh, so two is generally a safe number for a stage manager because this is something you want on top of most things. Uh, and that's it. So now uh, let's add an animation player. And let's take a look at how and what we might do. Uh, first, let's add a trans in, and this will represent our transition in. And what this is going to look like uh, is we're going to start over here like this. So I'm going to go to my layout, go to my transform size, and press this little key button. And we'll create a key, a reset track that's OK, and hit OK. And what we'll do is we'll make sure to move this uh, little bar here to one second in. And then let's expand this outwards and then key one more time. Now you will see these two little keys here. And if I go over here and I hit play, you'll see this is what my transition in looks like. And that's pretty cool. That is basically transition in to my scene to kind of look like, hey, we're transitioning into our scene. And then what we can do is simply uh, duplicate this. And we'll say trans out. And we don't need to do anything super complicated. We're just going to essentially switch these. So this is going to be a full screen, right? And then we're going to transition out by hiding it like that. Uh, and, and then for the reset, you can see here that the default is basically zero. And that is perfect because now if I hit play, we'll see my screen here. And I can now move around. Even though my stage manager is there with the color rectangle and everything. And that's perfect. All right, so now let's take a look at what we'll actually do to actually, you know, make this work. Uh, so first, what we need to do is actually create a new level. So let's go to level zero here and duplicate it by right clicking and duplicating. And we'll just say level one. And in this level, just to make it different, I'm going to delete these boxes. There we go. So this is our level one. Uh, I'm not going to do much in it right now, but let's go back to our stage manager and add a script. Let's move this script. Actually, I'll keep it in the scenes folder uh, just because it's in the global section. So I'll leave this here. And now what I want to do is I want to load. Uh, so I'm going to say constants level zero. 
is equal to reload. And then if I just type in level zero, this should pop up. Uh, if you don't see this pop up as you're typing, you can simply drag it in and that will give you the path just like that. Uh, but now I'm just going to duplicate this, but this will be level one and level one over here. And now we have preloaded these scenes. So now the question becomes, well, how do we change scenes? Well, let's create a function that allows us to do that. We will say change stage and then pass through a stage as a packed scene. And we could do a string too, but I, I prefer to do like this. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the function looks like. Uh, it's kind of just whatever you like to see or do. Uh, so, okay, let's take a look at what we want to do. The first thing we want to do as a basic is to take our animation player and play. Whoops, that's not what we want to do. We want to play the trans in. All right, so it's not getting uh, loaded right away. So what we can do here is I'm just going to load this animation player. And to make this easier on myself, I'll say anim.play. And then now when I try to type that in, yeah, there we go. We will get it auto-completed. Uh, so, okay, let's play the transition in. And we do want to play the transition out eventually, but we don't want to do it right away, right? How do we essentially make this wait before this plays, right? Because if I were to play this, it would cue this, but then cue this right away. So it wouldn't really cue it. It would just start playing the transition out immediately. So what we need to do is use something called a wait. And we will say anim dot animation finished. And this is a signal. So if we go to the animation player, the node, go to signals, you will find something called animation finished. This is basically just going to wait in our code. It's going to tell our code, hey, hold on, just wait until we get this signal, and then we'll continue and play all the other code below it. Right? And that's it. It's pretty neat because what happens is it's going to now just play this. It's going to wait until this animation is finished, and then it's going to play this or transition out. It's going to continue right after that. Um, so while we're waiting for this signal, what we can now do, or sorry, not while, but after we finish uh, that signal, we can say if stage is valid, what we'll do is we'll say get tree, change file to packed stage, and this will allow us to change to our stage, which we basically preloaded already. So we're going to take whatever level we're looking to go to and then just change to it. And that's it. Now, one other thing we're going to do uh, and this is honestly just to make sure that this level gets loaded. Uh, we're going to await, but not, not any animation or anything. We're going to wait for something called process frame. And this is literally just to make uh, the tree wait for this scene to be loaded. So we're essentially just making sure that this scene is loaded. Now, usually there's not really a need for this. Uh, the reason I add this, and it is better to add this, is if your scene or your level is really big. In our cases, it's not really required because this scene is pretty small. There's not much going on, right? There's a few tiles, there's two players, there's not much, right? But if you had a much, much bigger level, like uh, in Elden Ring or whatever, then you can imagine, hey, we need to actually wait for like two, three seconds to actually load uh, this scene. And that is what this will do. It will wait however long it needs to process that stage. All right. So once that's done, once we play the transition out, we're going to once again wait for the animation finished, and then we're going to do something else. Now, what is that other thing that we're going to do? We're going to unpause the scene. But to do that, we first need to pause the scene. So to pause the scene, we will simply say get tree dot paused is equal to true. And now to unpause it, we'll simply say false. Now, there is a problem, which we will look at in just a minute. This will create a bug, but we're going to un, we're going to debug it in a minute. Uh, and you may not know what it is, and that's totally fine. Uh, this just comes from experience of experiencing this bug. Uh, so now let's create the way to go to the next level. So what we can do here is let's go and find a ladder. And we can just search up ladder. And if we pop this in... I believe, is this the ladder we want? Nope, that is not the ladder I want. Let's find the other ladder. Yeah, I think it is this one. 
Yeah, here we go. That's the ladder I want. Let's go to the scale, and I think four might be a good number here. And let's now, although now that I look at it, I think the long might be better. Yeah, let's delete this one and use the long one. Uh, and again, maybe three is fine. Yeah, I think three is scaled perfectly fine. Uh, and now we can use this guy. Uh, we'll make local. We will, actually, we're not going to do anything just yet. Uh, we're going to add an area 3D. We're going to add a collision shape. And we're just going to add a box and make it as tall as the area. And then we're going to add, we're going to rename this to ladder, add a script to that ladder. We're going to put this in our ladders or our scripts scene here, objects, open, create. We're going to very quickly just add a signal, body entered. Uh, we can go to source here, connect, and we can just say if body is in group and we will player one we can say player one for now uh, we will see if we can actually change our scene now in order to do this uh, we will simply say change stage I believe that's what it was called yeah, change stage change stage uh, and then we need to call the actual level that we're going to. In this case, we're going to go to level one. All right, let's test it out. Let's see what goes, what happens. All right, immediately we can see that our stage manager is not happy with us because this guy is not acting properly. Uh, so let's go to the reset and let's pick this little guy, the auto load on play. This will play the reset uh, by default. So when I hit play one more time, it'll basically hide it and play that animation. Okay, great. Let's now test this out and see what happens. All right, what happened? Did it work? No, it didn't really work. Uh, or so it seems, that's what it seems like, but it did actually kind of work. What happened is that it paused the scene. So if we look at our code for the stage manager, we can see that it did kind of trigger, right? In fact, if you actually add a print function here, you will notice that it does print uh, but what happens is that it pauses the scene. And the problem is it can no longer play the animation because the script is paused. Because when we pause the entire tree, we're pausing everything. We're pausing the scripts. We're pausing literally everything. So the question becomes, how do we get around this? How do we make sure that this script runs, but not everything else? Well, if we go to the stage manager node, we can go to the process and find that the mode is on inherit. This means that it will inherit the tree process mode, essentially. And if we go to always, this means that it will never pause. So if I hit play and I try one more time, it should now work as intended. You'll see that the game paused, and then I transitioned into my next level. And that's perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. This is great. This is awesome. It's working pretty much as, as I wanted. All right, and that is how we create a level transition, okay? So make sure that the process mode of our scene here for our stage manager is on always. Now you may wonder, well, how come we only have to do the stage manager? Well, that's because its children will inherit its parent. So if you go to the process of that, it's on inherit. It means it's gonna inherit its parent, which is here, it is the stage manager, right? And here in the process of the stage manager, it's on always. And that's it. So yeah, now as a small mini challenge uh, to end this video, I want you guys to make this ladder a bit better and make it work with the player two as well, because right now this only works with player one. Uh, so I want you to make it so that it works with player two. Um, I also want you to think, hey, well, is only one player supposed to reach the ladder or both of them? Okay, so. I think both of them should be able to reach the ladder to go on to the next level. Uh, at least that's the game that I made. So if you want only one player, then go for it. Uh, but what we're going to do in my game is to make it so that both players have to reach the ladder. So I want you to add some variables and stuff like that to make it so that both players have to be within this area to actually go on to the next level. And once both of them are in that area, then yeah, you can go on to the next level. So do that. And I will see you guys in the next part.